I'm going to kick it off by turning it over to Hans Paul by asking him if he could get the conversation started by talking a little bit about his, as he looks at the global landscape, looking at all the different entities and the different companies and distinctions being made about globalization, the issues around globalization, can you speak a little bit as to how you view the current realities of globalization and leadership uh, and what is required to be successful in this world? And then I'm sure uh, Chairman Ning will pick up on it and spend more time on it talking about his personal experience, but also what he's doing with his company. So thank you. Very good. Yeah. Thanks, Anil. Well, good afternoon. Um, it's great to have such a large group of people here just right after lunch. Um, and I'm not sure whether you know, all these numbers of 4.0 and so forth are, are relevant, but I think what we clearly see is that uh, the world is changing. Um, and um, we see um, it becoming really multipolar world. And I think it's uh, even though uh, somebody said, um, you know, uh, um, the uh, uh, general secretary general of the OECD has said we are not yet in a multipolar world. Actually, we are. Uh, we truly are. I mean, there's not just uh, uh, the US and, of course, China, but there is still Europe, um, but there's India. Um, there is clearly the players in the Middle East. There's Brazil. Um, there's Japan. Uh, and, and so I think the world has really become more complex, whereas in the past we had uh, the US and, and we had Russia, and then for a while we had only the US. Clearly, it is a multipolar world. And you, you see this already when companies, you know, do an acquisition, you have to go through the antitrust, you know, legislation of companies in the US, in China, in Europe, uh, in sometimes even India, in Brazil and so forth. Everybody wants to have a say. So you have to deal with it. So it's a much more complex world. I think it's also what you see is it has, globalization has moved from really moving more from um, just manufacturing, outsourcing to Asia or to low-cost countries. Um, we see uh, a clear movement from uh, products to services and now increasingly to data uh, and information. Um, and that really creates also a much, much uh, more complex world as we move forward. And then I think, uh, I think the, the, the third key issue is that you, you also have to think about how to deal with the different constituencies because, you know, not only because of the trade friction, but, but not everything is now global supply chain. Sometimes it makes, you have to be local in some places, you can be regional in some other uh, areas, and you can still be global in, in, in certain ways. But I think, you know, being able to, to deal with, you know, local, regional, and then global issues at the same time. And you need to be much more thoughtful about how you address uh, key opportunities, the key uh, markets, uh, but also key opportunities for, for generating uh, products and services and data um, really requires you to be much more nuanced in, in your global approach and in your portfolio. Uh, and maybe the, the fourth element is that um, Globalization is not just about yourself, but about the partnerships, the ecosystems, which are so commonly referred to, where, you know, where do you do things on your own? Um, where do you uh, join uh, forces? Maybe where do you just have outsource everything to, to somebody um, who's doing things for you? Um, and, uh, and so a lot more partnerships, a lot more uh, interactions with very different players and sometimes you know of course it's customers it's suppliers but sometimes it's even um, you know competitors with whom you work together in order to uh, really have uh, the best setup in certain geographies in certain industries in certain sectors so truly many many more dimensions to uh, to watch and it really requires also um, and I think that's the the key topic of this what does it mean for leadership how you know, you have to, uh, to adjust to that. And how do you make sure that things are really working out in a much more complex world? So uh, what do you do in order to deal with all these challenges and opportunities? Uh, as Paul, I, I think uh, you say, the, you say the, the, the world has become uh, more complex than before. Um, I think more than that, uh, it's not only complex, it's uh, the world is changing its direction. 
uh, all of us used to very much uh, uh, support the globalization. But today, when we talking about globalization in this room, uh, globalization are being uh, stopped in many other places. So companies uh, globalized. Most of the major companies, uh, uh, we, we call them uh, uh, multinational uh, uh, companies. But the government still separate. You know, this created contradicting structure globally today. So commercial force, market force, companies try to be global, try to lower their cost, make supply chain more, more make supply chain more efficient, try to enter into a new market, uh, using different technology and the labor, they want to combine all these the most efficient things together to be a global company. Nobody wants to be a global company only for global reason, because they're more efficient, more competitive. But today the problem is government wants to stop that. Some government wants to stop that. Because they, they say it's uh, American first. So how can you be global? So do we still believe in globalization today is the issue. Do you? I have to because I already get globalized. What can I do? <laughs> no, but what as a person? What as a person? Yes, as a leader, but what as a person? You, you think? Of course, you, know, you, you, know, you, you, you get this global vision, OK? Uh, 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 the premier just said uh, 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 this morning, so no country, no company can be more, can be less more uh, competitive or more efficient or productive if you stay in a, in a small region. So I, I, I think uh, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if the Chinese uh, uh, had not uh, produced that many shirts for the Americans, I don't know how expensive the shirts in America would be. If the Chinese had not bought so many aircraft from the US, I think the aircraft company would be very small. Uh, and this is uh, the beauty of the globalization is, uh, you know, we, we all learn this uh, in college is the competitive advantage uh, things. It's the is the benefit created by trade but globalization. Uh, uh, if, you, if you use, a, let's say, an iPad like this, uh, in a, you know, it's a global, take a global company to do this. Uh, design, material, assembling, everything. I mean, this is, we live in, the society, in a globalization called economy for a long time. We thought it's take, we take it for granted. We thought it's, it's, it's going to be this way forever. But today, things changed. We have to, uh, let's say, pause a little bit and think of it over again. Say, do we still believe in globalization? Do we, do, we, do we still believe in free trade or free investment? The premier just announced uh, China will open its financial sector uh, for investment next year. OK, it's a thing, it's a globalization. But uh, now people say, oh, globalization is good. But uh, globalization didn't really benefit all of us equally. Because globalization makes somebody uh, uh, being, being sort of a, uh, uh, less benefit or disadvantage. But I think everybody, everybody, everybody benefit, or more or less. Had it, had it no globalization, you think the workers in in the middle west of the U.S. were, 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 were better off? I don't think so. But it's, it's good to find an excuse for so, something. You know, the most, most difficult uh, kind of a dangerous mistake human being made will be find a wrong excuse, try to solve the problem. This is basically what we are today. We find, we're trying to find a, 
uh, something to blame for something we don't like, but it's, it's not going to work. Yeah, but, but I think, you know, what you touched on this feeling of somebody, I mean, some people winning and some people losing, I think this is probably one of the, the key things that we have to address also as business leaders. Um, you know, as, um, you know, as we, I think all, you know, we have seen enormous growth around the world, and it's just not just China, uh, and maybe, you know, the, uh, the people who feel, you know, be a bit left out are in the Midwest, in, in, in the U.S. I think when you look at Central and Eastern Europe with the fall of the Iron Curtain, we've seen the uh, uh, standard of living of, you know, also tens of millions of people in, you know, Central and Eastern Europe rising, in Latin America rising, in Southeast Asia, India also. Um, and, uh, and over the last 10, 15 years, we also saw that in, in Africa. So it's not just... The U.S. China. We need to get away from this uh, dichotomy between those uh, two, and really think about the okay. whole world. You I, know? Try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So it was not. I think you know. In general, we need to get away from this and and to to really think you know just in terms of okay, is is China winning or is the U.S. winning? I think when we talk about global the global world, you know, everybody needs to be participating in this. Now, now when we when we talk about and, and you mentioned this, you know, try to be more efficient, more competitive. We move factories. You know, and so those people who have been working in the factories, you know, in, in Detroit maybe, are now the ones who are, um, you know, who have lost a job and who may not find a job at the same uh, salary again. But I think what, what we see in, in many parts of the world that employment has risen massively. Yeah? The question is, um, you know, so we have enormous benefits, but we also have a lot of anxieties. Uh, now, of course, in, in, uh, coming with the technology, and um, all the talk about digitization, AI, and so forth. But one of the key elements, I think, of leadership is that we really need to deal with all stakeholders you know, uh, much more. And I think, give me one, one more second, yeah, oh, one okay. more minute, sorry. Um, and I think, you know, rather than talking about investors only, we need to talk about, of course, our employees, our customers, our suppliers, but also government entities, given that these are national government. Um, and we need to make sure that we really also engage with society at large. And the business leaders can no longer just say, you know, this is not my area, this is for uh, society at large, is, um, is the, the government's issue. Um, as the business leader, you need to take this into consideration, you need to del deliver value. I, to be fair to business, okay, uh, I never said so before, but I want to say it today. To be fair to business, Business will not solve everything problem. You know? You can't say, oh, your business. You you have to be innovative. You have to produce new products. You have to be efficient. You have to compete. You have to cost low. You have to take care of the poor. You know, business do everything. Impossible. Let's say, why this uh, why these people being left uh, out behind? Education, fair policy. Uh, uh, you can't. You can't. You can't be. Uh, I, I. 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 I don't mean America, but uh, you can't be nationalism. You can't be racism. You have to be fair to everybody. You know. Uh, you have to train them well. You know something uh, which uh, government must do. If uh, your people don't go to a proper school training class or skill. You blame somebody, compete, to let them out of work, it's not fair. Not fair at all. China get a billions of people. China didn't blame anybody for employment. And China found their own way to create 15 million new jobs every year. Okay? Oh, everybody blame China. Oh, you guys uh, uh, you export too much. You do your share. And uh, another thing is, uh, is uh, employment. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think the number is contradicting because uh, you say, we need a job. We need employment. But on the other hand, they, say, they claim we are the highest employment rate today in history. Around the world, by the way. U.S. only. I, I don't want to talk about the world. No, uh, but anyway, <laughs> okay. 
Sorry, I try. Okay. <laughs> I try that word. I try to cover the word. But anyway, but it's, you know, I heard from people investing in the U.S. They cannot find the labor. You know, we get a famous uh, car glass company manufacturing in the in the U.S. They have to slow down their production, shrink their size, because no 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 workers. Yeah, that's right. So, but you still want to uh, want the manufacturing job, move back to the U.S. How? But let's be realistic. You are a consulting company. Tell them what to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, 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 no, but, but you, you tell them you calculation, the formula. What, what is the employment? No, I think simple economics. Okay, en employment employment has increased around the world. But I, I would like to respectfully disagree with you about business cannot be doing everything, you know. And you know, then of course, different to what I said earlier. I think in the U.S., for example, business is really engaged on education. So uh, the business people in Chicago get together to help the Chicago um, uh, school board really uh, think about you know, how to improve uh, the quality of education. And you, if I remember correctly, when the government you know, at the beginning of the 13th five-year plan said, we want to eradicate poverty in China, you know, also your company got one district where they said, you know, you really take care of this. I, 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 this is what I told you, yes. Yeah, no, no, it, it, we, it's, we it's, a, it. it, it's a true story. Yeah, it's, it, of course, it, I, everything I say is yeah, true. Yeah, it's good. You know, uh, <laughs> so, now let me, let me just finish. So, I think you but took you, you say only part. you say only part of it. Yeah, yeah, of let, course. Let, let me give you a full uh, picture. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, business does have its social responsibility. Business needed to engage in their community, in their society, in charity, in other things, try to do things beyond only money-making machine. Okay, that's good. But a business will not be able to replace education. Okay? Business will not be able to replace social welfare. You know, business will not be able to change the uh, immigration policy. You know, and this is not a business at all. Business can do a small part of it. Can do a small part, yes, I mean, make us happy. Uh, uh, you know, for, for Sinochem, uh, we got two counties uh, in China, uh, one in Tibet, one in Inner Mongolia, I told you before. So, uh, yes, we, we sent a, we sent a uh, wise uh, uh, county uh, director, uh, two of them there. Uh, we help them to uh, kind of build some of the small business, and, uh, and uh, we try to sell their products uh, online of, to some, some uh, kind of uh, distribution network, that's okay. Uh, and and uh, we, we, we are more close to, to the society. But we're not going to, to be able to, to change that. Uh, but, but still, I, I think, you know, of course, it's not just loan business, but the government, of course, is, was uh, um, uh, working on the infrastructure. But, I mean, you help to create jobs and to create sustainable jobs, um, and you help to link them high, with the rest of I it. think high-quality job creation is the number one. Uh, task for business. Yes, you know, yeah. high quality. No, 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 low quality job. But, but high quality job. But yeah. again, you know, it's not just you know uh, what you did, but I think you know around China, but also around the world. When you see companies, uh, you know, mining companies in Africa, in Latin America, they really also uh, develop communities. You know, they really take care of uh, education, uh, of healthcare, and so forth, of infrastructure, and and I think you know we only have, and this is you know, going back to what leadership 4.0 is, I think we really have a much broader sense of responsibility, and it's not corporate social responsibility, it's not CRI, uh, uh, whatever, CSR, um, for marketing purposes. It's really something, uh, I think we all have an obligation, I mean, BCG, for example, is working with, um, in, in certain countries, with young um, uh, adults, you know, who have dropped out of school or out of their apprenticeship, you know, really helping them to get skills, to get into a job and so forth. And it's working together with, with thousands of companies. And, and so I think we have a lot of opportunities to make this work and to, to use our capabilities to really have an impact. Of course, it's not just, just business, but business has an important role. I mean, we have capabilities and we need to uh, make sure that these capabilities um, are really brought to bear. You know, we also work, I mean, BCG works with the World Food Program, works with uh, the Gates Foundation on Global Health. So there, there are lots of opportunities, very much like, you know, your company is working 
in many different uh, communities and plays a very important role in not just providing jobs and, uh, and profitability for investors, but it's, it's, um, it is really about really helping those communities thrive. Of course, you're not paying welfare, but I'm, I'm sure you're also involved in you know, upgrading the schools or um, upgrading maybe the hospitals and so forth. So there are lots of things that you're doing. And I think this is how we are being measured as leaders going forward. Are we contributing Let, to let's, let's go back to business. Let's go back to business. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I still want to say something on globalization, uh, on take this opportunity, uh, because uh, uh, our company benefit a lot, China benefit a lot uh, from globalization. I think the globe benefit from China a lot because of globalization. I want to quote an example because I, I, I now I'm the chairman of Syngenta, uh, 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 a crop we call, we call an agricultural crop protection company, mainly on uh, uh, um, uh, crop protection products and seeds. So I want to quote recently uh, uh, when China uh, into, into summer uh, time and uh, there's a new uh, sort of a, uh, wheat disease uh, happened uh, in China. Could be very serious, and uh, could be uh, a, a quite a large percentage of uh, deduction of, uh, of yield uh, of, the, of, the, of the farmland because of the disease. So, you know, fortunately, because of globalization, because uh, Xinjiang is following all these uh, possible uh, uh, disease uh, insects or some kind of uh, uh, agricultural uh, 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 illness uh, very closely. And uh, we can uh, quickly provide this uh, uh, medicine uh, and, and, and pesticide and, uh, and uh, quickly cure that disease. Okay, that's good. So uh, I, I think it's something that benefit from globalization, from technology, and uh, really from uh, jointly work between, between uh, Basel team and the team in China, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's something that uh, makes you feel globalization really uh, create value for farmers yep. uh, in, in a quick, very, very quick uh, 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 pattern and uh, way, and also in a, in a very efficient and low-cost way. So uh, I, I, I think this is something, when you manage a global company, uh, you know, the, the synergy of, uh, of moving skills, uh, technology, and products globally is enormous. I mean, you, you, I feel so encouraged. I mean, there are a lot of uh, that, that sort of uh, uh, examples. So, uh, you know, you have to be, have a globalization uh, mind, a vision to, to start that. I think maybe build on, on, on what you just said, you know, how do you make sure that there is really good cooperation? I think one of the key elements is that um, as you become a, a global uh, or a multinational company, you also have to be multi-local and I think really spreading the talent from, you know, across the whole world, um, also the leadership. I think it's very important to have, at least as my experience, to have people in the leadership team who have very different uh, backgrounds, you know, uh, who have different experience, different cultural backgrounds. Um, and so, but we still see many of the leadership te uh, teams of, of many uh, big companies being either only American or Chinese or German or Japanese and so forth, so not to point fingers at anybody, but, but I think, or Indian, well, although I think, and we need, I think one of the key issues of leadership is really to diversify the leadership. And it's not just ethnic background, it's gender, it's sexual orientation, it's people with very different experience, you know, young and old. And do you see this as a key, uh, key opportunity and a key issue, or, or is it easy to, uh, to make that work? You know, I, you know, we're talking about the uh, real leadership. I, I think, uh, you know, sorry, I'm, hands, I, I think leadership takes more than that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, what you said uh, is, uh, is a format. Uh, it's uh, gender, color, age, education, different things. Uh, in organization, uh, leadership means uh, 
more than that means uh, determination, vision, execution, uh, you know, ma many, many things. You lead by uh, power or lead by heart. You know, I mean, different kinds of things, style, different things. You, you need a, uh, you, you, you get a different kind of style of, of leadership. So, uh, you know, when, uh, when the company tried to emphasize on its uh, board composition, on board uh, members, uh, so different country, different color, different age, uh, different sector. They thought uh, they would become a good board. I don't think so. You may need only one, two, one good person to be a good leader. Or you need a tank. You, you don't know. But uh, you take a different form. Particularly when you uh, lead a global, a global uh, company. Uh, and, 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 uh, um, and it's very much a balance between how much you res respect local culture or how much you want to lead the strategy, I mean, how much you want to be very friendly to people, or how much you want to be very decisive, you know, ma many, many things. Uh, eventually, whether you are living an efficient organization, very productive, very efficient, very competitive, and offering uh, so-called uh, high-quality jobs. Sorry, uh, I think we need to give the time to the floor, yeah, right? Yeah. I have, I, yeah. But I have one more point, you know, but because leadership, I think just focusing on the board or executive committee, I think is too narrow. I think leadership is, you know, uh, across the world, you have decentralized decision making. The question is, are you very centralized or are you very decentralized? Are you, you empowering you, uh, people to make you, uh, decisions? You prefer centralized or decentralized? I prefer decentralized. I think very much, you know, that there is. So I have to be centralized. I have to be centralized. <laughs> uh, you know, centralized, decentralized means no decision. No, 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 I tell no, you. no, 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 I think this is really Nobody crucial. responsible, no, no decision no, making, no, no. nobody you can evaluate, this is not my problem. You know, the company is doing poorly, but everybody doing proudly, because they're proud of themselves. You know, you need one people to lead, I mean, in any organization, I think in, uh, in, in, in Boston consulting must be the same. You need somebody, uh, stand up, decide, direction, go ahead. I say, oh, where we go, where we go? I'm, if today, if today uh, 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 you know, all the people in the room speak together, you hear nobody. Yeah. No, but, but I, while you have just let me qualify, you know, what you have, of course, one No, no time, no time, no time. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think the key is if you have a... Only two minutes left. Yeah, a broad opportunity for people to really, uh, you know, follow the direction, you know, they, can, they have to make uh, local decisions because they are much faster. If you, everything has to go through a center, I think you would be in trouble. I think it's really part of, of leadership 4.0 to be able to, to deal with a much more complex, heterogeneous, and decentralized very, organization. Very textbook answer. No, 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 <laughs> I, no, no absolutely not, absolutely. I, I have, I have I, lived I mean, it, I do live it. But I think we should really have, you know, maybe one or two questions uh, or... Yeah. No lengthy comments, please, you know. We have already taken too much yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here, there's a question okay. here. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so we have to go back to the sort of globalization versus the workforce employment issue. Uh, apologies to Chairman Ning. Uh, so I'm, I guess the, the point, is, the, the question is, because uh, globalized or multinational companies are really benefiting from the comparative advantages across different countries, but within each country, not everyone is uh, enjoying the same benefit. And plus, normally it, it is the government's responsibility to provide relevant trainings and education so that these people can catch up with the globalization trend. My question to uh, Mr. Berger is that, uh, do you think it, it is the responsibility of the multinational companies now, instead of the government, that they should provide relevant trainings, opportunities, and such re take such respons responsibilities? Okay, shall we uh, uh, collect one more uh, uh, question and then we answer? They said 38 seconds. Okay, <laughs> so then let, me, let me ask very clearly. I think, I think companies really have, you know, especially as we now enter the, the age of digitization, a responsibility to really retrain people to a large extent. 
um, and uh, not to, uh, to wait for, for government entities. I think there is a contract, an implicit and explicit contract between a company and the workers to really uh, engage and make sure that people really have a chance uh, to build for, for their future also. Um, and if the training is not sufficient for your company, but I think it should really help you to find another job uh, as you move forward. Sorry. You should. Okay, you should. no, 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 okay, no, zero. He's looking at the time, and given the uh, interest of time, I, I want to first say, I didn't expect it to be this lively. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, you didn't agree on several issues, but I have to believe that you probably agree on the fundamentals and uh, not so much on the differences. You know, uh, when Professor Schwab created the World Economic Forum in 1971, he also wrote a book called The Stakeholder Theory, which was revolutionary at that time because Milton Friedman was the dominant force of thinking in business, which is the business of business is business. And his theory was, over time, that is not going to be the case. You have to look at multiple stakeholders. But along with that came the notion, how do you balance the interest of the different stakeholder and who is responsible for those? And it is that lesson that has progressed over the last 50 years. And also, there's something called the Davos spirit. And the Davos spirit was, if you bring intelligent people, well-meaning people, well-experienced people from multiple areas, they will have a great conversation. They may not agree on everything, but they will work, to work, to work together to creating a better world. And I think today you saw a reflection of that. Two of the more outstanding people in their own disciplines challenging each other on their assumptions, sometimes even on their conclusions. But I think at the end of this way, this is not the end of the conversation. This is the beginning of the conversation. It's an ongoing and, one. And, yes. and it's an ongoing. <laughs> I used to be a professor, and I used to say that just because you started talking doesn't mean they've started listening. <laughs> and just because I, you stop talking doesn't mean they have stopped thinking. <laughs> so we are going to stop talking now, and you're going to continue thinking about the discussion points that Hans Paul and uh, Guang Nin ra raised over here. So Chairman Ning, thank, thank you so much for your comments, yeah, and yeah. Chairman, thank you. Chairman Bruckner, thank you. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Very good. Very good discussion. Thank you. Good show. <laughs> you did. Adios. Thank you. Thank you. Very good.